Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes, and this is the handover of the Order Sleeper Ascot 2008. So, as we start the walk round on the vehicle, on the driver's side first, we've got these two here. So, this is where your cassette loo is, this is your header tank. So, using the round headed key, you can open this, and this is where you'll put your pink diluted solution for your cistern, which is your flush. And below, you've got your cassette. So, ensuring that the blade's closed on the inside of the toilet, you'll be able to lift and slide out, which it's not. So, ensuring that the blade is closed, which it is now, you'll be able to lift the yellow handle and slide the cassette free of the vehicle. You'll be able to carry it to your waste disposal point, which is normally beside your toilet block. Remove the cap. Press the button and empty it out. Once you've emptied the cassette, there's normally a tap there, so you put some water in, you'd give it a rinse and tip out again. Then if you're using the chemical foam, you've got 120 mil in this cap, so you can use the green or the blue liquid tip it into here and it's good to go back into the vehicle if you were to use the tablet form which is the cellophane tablet to the new format of Fedford cassette chemical you put a pint of water in which you can either do now or you can do when you put the vehicle the cassette back into the vehicle you can flush a pint of water into the cassette followed by one tablet Underneath, you do have some storage. So you've got storage there. A winding handle for your corner steadies at the back. This is your boiler flue. So when heating the water on gas, this cover must come off. So to take it off, hand on the top, pinch in the middle, and pull it off the vehicle. If it wasn't taken off when heating the water on gas, the fumes would circulate in here, it'll fail and it'll not heat your water. So the cover must come off, and the best place to put this is in the passenger door pocket. And then when you're ready to do your pre-flight checks before you leave, you would just ensure that you've got your cover on. When you're traveling and when you're washing the vehicle, put the cover on as you don't want dirt to get in beside the grill. Further along, you do have your mains hooker points. This is where you took the vehicle up. So you get your hooker blade, lift and expose the three ends, and hook the vehicle up. Always hook the vehicle up first, then your sight, as we wouldn't want it to expose you to a live lead. And then when unhooking, there's just a small blue clip on the left hand side you'd push down to allow the hooker blade to come free of the vehicle. Above you've got an external tele point, so this is if you are on a super site. You can connect your motorhome to their TV aerial if you are struggling to use the aerial on the roof. Behind the back wheel you've got your waste water, so this is any water that you've drained out down a plug hole or any liquid you've drained down. It's very important that in the winter especially that you drain this off, otherwise there is chance that it could freeze. But normally what you would do is on the way out of your site, if you weren't on a super site, you would just drive over the grid, park as close to the grid as you can and allow your waste water to drain off. And then you've got your blue, which is your blue water. So blue tap equals blue water. So again, when not using it in the winter, you would drain it off as you wouldn't want the water to freeze or if you're taking on contaminated water, you're simply not using the vehicle for a couple of weeks, you can drain this off. To fill the water, you put your hose pipe in there and wait until it overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board. Do carry a hose pipe with you and some hose pipe ends as it's normally just a brass tap on most sites. And then at the back of the vehicle, you've got your high level brake light, your reverse and sensors along the back, your tow bar with seven pin electrics. 
On the passenger side, you've got your gas locker, LPG, liquid petroleum gas, opens with the key, habitation key. And then you've got space for two bottles in here. So this is our six kilogram test bottle, propane, and always run the vehicle off propane. Once the bottle's in, strap the bottle in place with the straps provided. To connect the bottle to the pigtail, it's a left hand thread, opposite thread with it being gas, hand tighten, no need for a spanner, then you just turn on and off from the top of the bottle. It's always safe to turn the bottle off when traveling, and then you can turn it back on when you arrive on site. You've got your fridge vents, your awning light, habitation key also opens this door here. Can lock and open the habitation door. Down beside the passenger door on the pod leg, you do have your diesel filler. So it opens with the transit key. Pop that in there. You can then fill with fuel, which is diesel. You've got some storage underneath the seat. Your engine battery is underneath the driver's seat. And then again, access to the bonnet, you'd use the key. Get your main key, pop it in above the board badge there. Turn to the left to release the bonnet and then to do the secondary catch, turn to the right. And then you have your power steering fluid your brake fluid, your engine dipstick for checking the levels, engine oil filler, radiator fluid, and your screen wash. Should you need a jump start, just underneath here, underneath the red, you've got a jump start terminal that leads to underneath the seat as the battery's not underneath the engine bay, and then you would just earth off Anywhere you can earth off, but normally you would earth off the engine hoist, which will be down here somewhere to get a good earth or here. So once you step into the vehicle, before you go to the main control panel, there's this switch here. This is the 12 volt kill switch. So what that does is, if you were parking the vehicle up for the winter, or you were parking it up and you didn't want a battery drain, you can knock the switch off, which will then stop any power from the leisure battery coming to any appliances that you haven't properly turned off. Above the door, you do have your main sergeant control panel. So you've got your on off switch here, which will either turn on 12 volt if you're not hooked up. But if you are hooked up, you will get mains to 40 volt. Battery transfer switch, I would never really advise using this because when it's off, it uses the leisure battery to power the appliances on the motorhome side. Once you turn that off, turn that on, should I say, it'll start using the engine battery, which we don't advise because you can flatten the engine battery and then when you go to start the engine, it'll be dead. And you'll have to call out your breakdown cover to get you going again. So don't really use that switch. It's only if your leisure battery does go dead and it's a quick emergency job of five minutes to get something going again. You've got your pump here, so Turn your pump on to pressurize the water through the vehicle for the kitchen, sink, the shower, the hand basin and the toilet. Otherwise you will not get any water through without the pump being on. And you've got your own light, which is the light on the outside of the vehicle. Going through here, you have your control panel. So you've got control panel and the model. Leisure battery reading, vehicle battery reading, fresh water reading, and your waste water reading all in there. To lock the door, you just simply press the tab in on the top, and then as soon as you go for the handle, the door will release. You've got a blackout blind and a fly screen, so you just move it like this, or you can depart the two, and then you can open. The window should it be a nice day on the door. 
but always make sure that shut before traveling along with your skylights and your windows got your electric step switch this will automatically retract when the engine is started worktop extension which then you would just pull these away from the worktop to drop the worktop back down and you have your own unwinding handle which just lives on here and clips back in the kitchen you've got one electric hot plate on the back which indicates by the red light when you hooked up to mains 240 volt this will work and then you've got three gas rings so once you've had any gas or electric on the hob on allow it to cool before you put the cooker hood down and then you do have your your grill which is lit there and below you have your oven you may want to take the oven shelves and grill pan out when traveling like we have done just to stop it rattling when you take it down the road or wrap them up and then below you've got these red gas isolation valves which are mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced just so the technician can test each gas appliance should you have any problems with gas turn the bottle off to be safe or you can isolate each appliance from here but you don't really need to touch these these are mainly for when it is serviced got storage above then you But your tap there, that's on the hot, and you can see the steam coming off the water, so that water is very warm. Your hot water system's working. And then below, you've got a slide out cutlery tray and some storage. Another worktop extension, so you can slide this out for more worktop space. And below, you've got your Dometic fridge with freezer box. So to operate, you've got three ways off at the top. First one is gas. So if you're wild camping, you you have no electric source. You'd be out parked in a field or a lay-by. You'd have no other way of using the fridge than gas. So you'll hear it clicking in the background until it lights on gas, which it has there. If you are on site or you are at home and you are pre-chilling the fridge or using the fridge on site, you would just use 230 volt electric because you've paid your site fees. Why would you want to waste your gas? Or if you are moving from site to site or from home to travel to your site and you've already pre-chilled it at home, you'd use 12 volt which gets a feed from the engine when the engine started and it turns this into a big cool box but again it has to be pre-chilled before you do so it'll keep the temperature the same but if you haven't done it don't expect to put your shopping in and then arrive at site and for it to be cold because it won't happen on 12 volt it's got to be pre-chilled this side's your temperature so you can adjust that accordingly so when pre-chilling you probably want it on the coldest setting and then when you put your shopping in you probably want to turn it down just a little bit to stop the shopping from freezing and then when you shut the door you've got this catch here that you can push back and forth which is just your travel catch and that'll keep the door shut and locked in place until you open the door so that you can gain access to the fridge to heat the vehicle so the heating on the vehicle is diesel it's a Wabasto diesel heater so you did just the temperature to what you want it at and then you've got three buttons so you've got off in the middle you've got the fan which will recirculate the heat once the vehicle is to temperature but to heat the vehicle you've got the three wavy lines at the top which indicates heat the red light comes on and this will start heating the vehicle should the vehicle get too warm and you think it's at the right temperature then you can knock it off and put the fan on which will just again recirculate the heat but with the diesel heater you do have to make sure that you've got a quarter of a tank of diesel or more in the main engine tank 
which is where this gets its feed from because they're on both different levels so the diesel heater intake is a lot higher than the engine intake obviously for numerous reasons so if you are parked up for a week you're not going to get up one morning and your diesel is going to be completely empty there's always going to be enough in there to start the engine and get off for some diesel to heat your water you've got your ultra store which is gas only and what you would do is this is the gas side so you in the middle you've got 70 to 30 this is how hot you want your water so you adjust the temperature accordingly and then you just turn it down to the gas flame you'll see the green light comes on in the right hand corner which indicates it's on should you get a red light if you've either run out of gas you've not turned your gas on or you've done what a lot of people do and you forgot to take the cover off so that's your gas side the electric side is in here so you can just turn it on and off and obviously you'd only heat the water should you have sufficient water in the main tank which you'll check on the control panel should you have no water in don't bother heating water because it'll be like boiling a kettle without any water in you'll fry the element you've got a pole there for your tabletop too so they go in the in the floor here at the back you've got your solar panel regulator which charges your leisure battery and you can see that it's green which means it's charging once it goes to a flashing green it's fully charged you've got your ac200 control unit here which is your fuse board trip board so you've got all your trips here on mains electric and then you've got all your fuses here and they'll tell you what they do so it would be a good idea to carry some spare blade fuses with you don't bother about this switch just leave it on you don't need to turn it off this will just light up when 240 volt hookup is on board and then above this is your amplifier for your tv aerial so what you can do is you can boost and we can the signal should it be too strong or too weak via this little switch here so should you should it be on full and your picture's pixelating just turn it down that means it's too strong or if it's on minimum you can boost it up to get the perfect picture now in the washroom so to operate your toilet you've got your flush which is this big blue button here so make sure the pump's on and you'll get your flush out your header tank so you can see it's a pink liquid diluted pink liquid which you get in the two packs of the blue and the pink so you flush the toilet first before use then this is the blade here so this is has to be shut to get the cassette out slide that to the right which opens it everything will go into the cassette use the toilet flush it after use and then slide back to the left which seals the blade and then should it be full you can get it out the outside so if you get into a habit of doing that you'll always have it shut when you're ready to empty it so you just have to keep an eye on the cassette to see when it is full you've got your shower screen which you can just push along and it will shut the toilet off from the shower when you are winterizing it's very important that you remove your shower head from your hose as you can see there it's got a loop in any water could coil up here and potentially freeze and split this pipe so if you unscrew it lie the hose into the tray and leave all the mixer taps open any water that's in the pipe lines behind or the pipe work or taps the water will just go straight out of the waste the waste would be open outside and so would be the the fresh water would be as well so all the water would just drain out of the vehicle and there's no chance of the water freezing in any pipe work within the motorhome individually switched lights here so you can turn them on and off and that's the same throughout the motorhome on the ceiling those lights are the same and then you do have a fly screen with a blackout blind and then you can open the skylight so you can have it open like that or you can have one end down 
side to side or front to back depending on which way the wind is blowing but always make sure that your skylights are secure and shut before you start traveling so underneath the bench seat behind the wardrobe is where you'll find the location of your leisure battery but mainly and most importantly you do have your boiler drain here so when this is lying down like it is now the boiler is holding 10 litres of water it's very important in the winter when you're not using it that you drain the boiler off because if the boiler does the water within the boiler does freeze it'll crack the boiler and it'll be very expensive to repair and it isn't covered under any sort of warranty so what you've got to do is you've got to lift this up you'll hear the water draining directly out underneath the chassis do that without the pump on and no power on inside the vehicle lift it up open this one open the fresh and the waste outside which are outside this side of the vehicle open all the taps within the motorhome remove your shower head from the shower hose like i've just told you and then when you come to reuse the vehicle shut here shut the fresh and the waste outside put all the taps down put all build the shower head back up fill the vehicle with fresh water come in put the main panel on put the pump on go to the cold side of the tap first you should get a pressurized cold water feed straight away go to the hot side it'll cough splutter make all sorts of noises until you get a free flow of water from the hot side of the tap first you do them all and then this is when you'd know your system was primed then you can continue to heat the water should you wish and your system is all primed for the season ahead so to make the bed what you've got to do is there's a little plate here so you just push the lever down on the plate this will slide this out so you just slide it out it'll pull the base cushion right the way to here you would turn this cushion down like that and then you would put the infill cushion which can be found over the cab or in the wardrobe into here and there you have a double bed across the vehicle you'd remove these cushions at the back to give you a little bit more length and width to the bed has a quite chunky cushions but then you have a nice double bed across the back of the van so above the cab you do have another double bed so what you need to do is lift and slide this out drop it down like so and then you would just pull just two parts of the mattress which means that you would put them both down lift one up when you want to store it which enables you to get in and out the cab more easily and then in the bag here that you can find up there as well you do have a ladder which clips onto here to gain access to over the cab you've got two lights on both sides and you've got a privacy curtain just down here so should you want to block the van off from the or should i say block the bed off from the rest of the van you can do and you've got a safety net if you're putting kids or grandkids up in the top and you don't want them to roll out during the night now in the cab which is based on a mark 7 ford transit you do have your handbrake to the right cab curtains to black the cab out on an evening electric passenger and driver windows and then to lock the cab you just push this lever in here and this will lock your cab doors both passenger and driver and your back door as well as that is on the central locking you've got your electric mirror adjustment so that does both sides the top ones not the bottom ones they're manually to be adjusted so top and bottom off side lights headlights pull it out for your fog lights and then you've got your park lights the other way if you're parking you can put your park lights on and you've got your headlight adjustment should you need to adjust your headlights wipers and your in, in and how quick you want them to go your frequency and then on this side you've got your indicators 
and you've got your trip computer so it'll go through the screen here so you can see the outside air temperature the average speed the average fuel usage miles per gallon and the distance to empty the range all through scrolling on here and it'll go through that screen there you can reset your trip computer by pressing the end button here and then you do have on and off for your cruise control and then you set it by plusing the minus speed up slow down and then should you have to cancel it which is would be by the foot brake you can press resume to the last speed set before the engine was turned off got your hazard lights this little light here will light up to indicate that the diesel heater is on so you'd need to manually turn that off from the back and this light will go off you can run around with your diesel heater on in the winter which will preheat the back of the motorhome and it's totally legal to use a diesel heater when running not only will it heat the vehicle before you get in it but it'll also heat the vehicle habitation side when you're driving so that you're not having to warm the vehicle up from cold when you arrive on your site so you may want to turn that on the last 10 minutes of your journey radio so you've got cd fm am press one to six to save your favorite radio channels by searching here and then you've got your audio settings there your fan speed so you can recirculate you can press the aircon which is by pushing it in the green light will come on and off and you've got your demat your demiss setting your max whether it goes to your face your, your face in between would be your face and feet your feet or the screen and then you've got your temperature on this dial here 12 volt handy compartment there of both both passenger and drivers if you push these in you've got 12 volt in this one and some storage and just some storage in that one along with the large glove box below storage underneath but this does flip over and it's two cup holders and then your passenger seat will spin around by using the lever here to turn around into the habitation side your driver's seat won't as you have a bulkhead behind <laughs>